guys, it's Melissa with the Melissa Atelier. Today I'm here at White Dress by the Shore and I want to talk to you a bit about bustle styles. So I have a few different styles of gown here and I want to go through what may be the best method to bustle the gown per the dress and also per the individual. What I always like to stress to my brides is that there really is no right or wrong style to choose, but sometimes a dress does really lend itself to one style versus the other. So the two main bustle styles that we use here are traditional and French. So I want to just demonstrate here on my middle gown what each of those is so you can get a feel and hopefully it will help you when it comes time to, to decide. So the first dress that I have here is a beautiful crepe gown, buttons down the back. It's more of either a trumpet style fit and flare. Um, it just has that really pretty sort of delicate extension off the back. So I put some pre-marks, pre pre-pinned it, if you will. And first I want to show you what a traditional bustle looks like. So a traditional bustle is when we take the fabric of the train and we're going to bring it up and over. And for the demonstration, I'm just going to pin everything on my samples. So what I would do in this case is I would typically reinforce a couple of the buttons along that back line. And then I would put a loop that we would be able to pull out and attach to the given button. So what it's going to do is it's going to make sort of this triangular shape off the back. And then when you lift it up, it'll drag just a little bit on the floor. We can bring it up a little bit higher, but sometimes it's nice to have that little bit of a romantic kind of sway on the floor. And that would basically bring it up. You see that it does sort of end up making you a little pocket here. I always like to tuck those in just to make it more conical in the back. The number one thing to remember about the traditional bustle though is that unfortunately because of its nature, it is a little bit more delicate. So if you are afraid that someone's going to step on you, you're going to be really close with everyone, or if you're really, really into dancing, I always recommend we do the French. So the French style is the kind that comes underneath. And what we do with that is we have ties and we like to color code our ties where we can. So in this case, it'll only be one tie up, so really no need. But when we get that up like that, it basically kind of inverts that pocket. I'm going to bring it up a little bit higher. And same thing, we can have a little bit of drag on the floor. And I'm going to turn it out so we continue that line of buttons. And again, what's great about the French bustle is that because it's tied, because the ties are stitched to the inside of the dress, it is a little bit sturdier. We can't always use the French bustle, and I'll kind of demonstrate why in a moment but it's a really great baseline. It's definitely the preferred, I think. But now I'm gonna move over to this beautiful Mikado gown. So this actually has two layers. This outer part is actually part of this beautiful bow. So I'm just gonna get that off to the side for a minute because I wanna work with the dress. Now, with the gown here, I would recommend to a bride that this be done in the French style. The reason being that this fabric has so much body Yes, we could, of course, add buttons and loops or hooks and eyes to get all of this up. But when we do it, that fabric, because of all that body, it tends to kind of kick out and it adds a little sort of weight in the back that I don't think is as great, particularly for this style, given the fabrication. So in this case, I'm going to pin it up to the French and show you what that looks like. Here in this case, because we would do about three pickups probably, if the gal wearing it was about as tall as this mannequin. So because we would do the three pickups, we would color code the ribbons underneath. So we would um, do matching colors to the outside and you would tie them up underneath. So again, it's that beautiful inverted pocket. And what I love about the French bustle on a fit and flare dress or a trumpet style dress like this is it continues to give that really nice shape through sort of the rear and then that fittedness in through the thighs before it does the kick back out. I think it really keeps the integrity of the design. Sometimes when you have a traditional bustle and it's pulling, it can pull the fabric away from you. Again, it depends on the fabrication. It depends on the weight of the dress. So now that I have this beautiful overlay from the bow, we can do the same thing with that. Now, because this may flop around, I may choose to do a loop and a button on the inside versus the ties because when she's kind of walking around, I don't want people to see strings hanging off of her back. So just a little problem solved that sometimes happens. And same thing here. This makes this really beautiful sort of inverted conical shape and we get it to flare 
along with the dress. So it really keeps the integrity of that design. So that's the French. And then over here, what I've gone ahead and done that I want to show you, this is actually a nice A-line dress. So it has this beautiful sort of striped like chiffon layer on top or organza. Um, it's really light and lovely, but it does have the horsehair trim at the bottom. So I'm going to just kick this out of the way for a moment just because I want you to see. When I was getting ready for this demonstration, I actually went ahead and tried to do this in the French style. Typically when we have a more sheer fabric, what we'll do is still a French, but we can use an organza ribbon. Um, and we just tie knots on the ends of the ribbon. So one knot ties to the other one with one knot, two knots to two knots, etc., etc. But I found that when I did it, because of this sort of body given the stripes, see what happens when I sort of turn it up, it kind of adds this weird kind of fluff and it was a bit, too extra and I didn't like it. So what I did was I went ahead and I pinned the um, base in a traditional fashion. So what that is is coming up and over. And in this case, I would use sort of this, where the stripe is, I would do my buttons and loops on there just because there's a little bit of reinforcement. There also happens to be quarter panel seams. So when I have that, I know that I can get a little bit of extra strength. Um, so I'm not as afraid to do a traditional on a style like this. So see how we've taken that train and we've brought it up off the floor. Now, because of this design, I have this beautiful overlayer here, very similarly to the bow that we had on this gal. And same thing, if I wanted to bring it underneath, it's okay, but it kind of does a little bit too much drama for my personal taste. And what I love about this is I always like to try and keep the integrity of the actual design of the dress. Now, I could take this and go traditional and maybe start from a little lower, and get it right up here. I see that there's an opening to allow for the zipper. So I could always hook it here and make this pretty drape, which I think is just fine. But the other thing I can do, because this whole outer layer is detached, I would actually consider hiding a loop or a hook and a button for up here and getting it onto her waist. Because what that does is it sort of keeps that beautiful A-line shape coming from her waist like the rest of the dress. So you can see the tip is just off the floor and then she's ready to dance. So those are a couple different um, ways that you can do the bustles. Like I said, the traditional and the French. Again, given the uh, style of the dress, you may choose to go one way or the other. I often find that bustles are very polarizing, so some people really love and really hate one or the other. Um, but always talk to your seamstress and kind of decide what's best.